Calling to order the February 10th meeting of the Muppular Planning Commission. First thing we do is approve the agenda. And we'll take a look and let us know if it's all right. If we do get to number seven, we'll be talking about the energy chapter. It's because transportation wasn't ready, so. Okay. Was okay. that a handout over there? No. no. Okay. I have to no. run downstairs yeah. and print it out. Yeah, I think it's gone out there. See how long six takes. Motion to approve the agenda. Do you okay. one? Nope. We have a motion from Barb to approve. Second. A second. Second by Stephanie. All in favor of approving the agenda? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Agenda approved. Comes from the chair. Um, I don't have any, I mean, I guess I could reflect on the last meeting, which uh, was the, the hearing on design review. I thought it went really well. I feel like um, the Planning Commission's in a good place as far as uh, our relationship with the public. I mean, I've, no one seemed to aim anything towards us as far as, you know, lack of trust or anything, which is not, I mean, it's not something we take for granted. So I think it's notable to say that, that I think we're in a good place and that we can continue to, I think that we've been as rational and, and, and even as possible going through this process. So I feel like we can just keep going and uh, it seems like it's going pretty well. Um, and with that, you know, that brings us to tonight, which we're going to go through the comments we've received so far. Um, and there's maybe, a, you know, a couple of big topics for conversation, but there's also a few little things, so it's not, not a huge amount. Uh, and then as far as how this is going to play out in the future, um, we will still have one meeting and, uh, after this one where we... Uh, where the, we provide notice to the public and invite people to come back again and provide notice to the state so that they're uh, notified too that we're making these changes. So there'll be at least one more meeting where we, where we consider that or at least leave it open for consideration and then from then from there we'll uh, move it to the city council. Do we have to have that meeting because we might make changes based on the hearing last time? Is that why we need to? No, well, well, we're going to make, um, if we make changes, we'll just send things back out to rewarn um, the required, the abutting communities in the state. So that we're supposed to send a copy to DHCD, and they didn't get a copy. We sent out 350 letters to every single member of the of the design review district, but uh -huh. the state did not get a copy. Oh, I see. Okay. And so just for making sure that does not end up being a point of contention that somebody wants to run us over with down the line. Right. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll just, just warn one more meeting. We'll make whatever changes, and then we'll just warn a meeting for the ninth okay. and um, on the revised version and see what. So I think we've always talked about having extra opportunities for the public yeah. to come in, so that works out fine. Um, so there's that. Uh, I won't be here at the next meeting. I guess that's another thing to, to bring up. Um, so Aaron, you'll... Be around. I take it to sure. take over. Yeah. So, Aaron will lead the next 24th. one. That sounds right. That, yeah, okay. yeah. Yes. Um, so at that meeting, um, the topic of discussion, I believe, will be the city plan. Yeah. So probably the energy and transportation. It'll yeah, probably well, we'll we'll have historic preservation back. Their meeting tomorrow night, unless that's changed. Meeting tomorrow night. I think so. Okay. <laughs> So they'll, they'll finish up their section, um, and then we should have a couple others that are pretty close. So a lot of them are getting, everybody's very interested in talking about the topic. So unfortunately, they haven't always finished them up, but they're working <laughs> on it. They're very interested in working through them. Great. Great. Uh, uh, will you shoot me an email after that meeting? Just let me know. Like, what happened? Like, yes. few sentences? Yes, okay. I can send you a debriefing email. Thank you. That's, we're all yeah. still it's here. the least I could do. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody um, quit. <laughs> yeah, that would be, that would be, <laughs> like, I come back and it's like, and we don't have a commission anymore. Um, Jeep Kirby? Something like that. Why'd you have to leave? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, guess what happened. Oh, uh, yeah. So, I don't think that will happen. Um, okay, so that's all I have for comments. Um, so that moves us to general business, uh, where uh, we will see if the public has anything to discuss that's not on the agenda. Um, the only 
person here is Eric. Uh, Eric, did you have something to talk about before? Just uh, uh, the one thing I noticed is the dealing with the, the gable roofs that face the street and um, this design review. So he's here for number six. Right. I I would like to take that up with the preservation commission. Uh, I, I wrote some quick language out, just a general idea. I can okay. talk about that. That's on the matrix, right? Uh, no, I didn't have those comments in advance. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, so when we, we'll so when we, when we talk about, that's most of what we're doing tonight. We're going to go through the comments on the regulations. So you can come up and we'll dive into that. Does that sound okay? okay. Pull up a chair and join us. Yeah. <laughs> come on up now if you want. Should All we right. talk about CBRPC meeting tomorrow, or can we just we just talk about that after? Go we can on. talk about it after unless you okay. want to. No, that's fine. Okay. I just didn't know when the best time to bring it up. Okay. Okay. I mean, you just drove it. No, no, no. no. Come on. I was just yes. making a roll for you on the other side. I'm taking up a lot of space. We probably should have invited you up earlier. I'm really bad at formalities, by the way. You're doing great. I'm just going to own that. <laughs> You're doing great. I, I am from, I was born in Eastern Kentucky and grew up in East Tennessee, and I do blame that for things. Where sometimes. Were you? Huh? What city? Pockville, Kentucky. <laughs> Everybody's a coal miner. Uh, Is that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And somebody wrote a book about growing up in Kentucky. Yep. And uh, oh, I can't remember the name of it. That's like, yeah, that's my yeah, wife read that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 moved up to southern so yeah um anyway so i'm crippled when it comes to those things um so that's it for the general business and now we have to consider the minutes from january 27. just one little correction under when you considered the minutes from january 13th it says the motion passed on a 4 0 vote with Barb abstaining because she was not present at yeah. the meeting. So just insert the word not. Okay. Otherwise, it doesn't make much sense. Great that we have a record of the comments. Yeah, it really is. And they're pretty concise. to approve them, Stephanie. We have a second. As with Barb's uh, edit. Amended. With it. Yeah, yep. I'll second. Oh, you second? Yeah. Barb seconds? Okay. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. We approve the minutes. And now, on to the uh, good stuff. So uh, Mike uh, wonderfully made us uh, this matrix of the comments that we've received so far. Uh, and then he also has his own recommendations uh, that go with them. So I guess with that, I'll hand it over to Mike to walk us through. So yeah, for anyone who hasn't seen these, we've done, we did these for the, um, the zoning update. So um, it was pretty, it was something that the consultant had brought along as an idea. She would put these things together, and so I have stolen it and reuse it. So um, we usually just try to record what the recommendations were. I try to provide some comment or thoughts on it, and then you guys can make a decision. 
Um, so the first one was on the 29 Terrace Street, and we'll kind of end up with a couple of discussions up here with the Redstone North Redstone District, which is the red area. Yeah. Um, there, her property's here, and we got uh, met with a person whose property is there. So the three of them, the old historic district, followed this line. When 2017 came and they revised the historic district, the National Register Historic District, they cut those three properties out. But this meant this district had already been made and we didn't catch that. So these three probably should be part of the. Yeah, there's a real break list. at the top of the hill there. Yeah. So this is beyond Bailey and Terrace? Is this that is beyond Bailey. Um, the first one on the corner. The first one on the corner would stay yeah. in, but yeah. the other ones, as you start going up Terrace, would not be in. So that would be the first. That's what the recommendation here is, and I, I kind of agree. These at least these three should be removed. But sorry, the one, sorry, the corner one you're saying is the one that's on Bailey on Terrace. Uh, yes. And then the it's corner. three. I can't tell where the lines are. It's three up from, from yes. that. Okay. Is it on the if red? you're looking at the black line, the right. black the line corner properties would stay in. Line. Would stay in. Okay. Yeah. But it's the three past. Since they're already taken out. Since that's they were taken out of the National Register, this district. So, from the black line northward, there is it just three parcels that make up all of that on area? Three north on Bailey or three north on Terrace? Just three north on Terrace. Three Oops. north on Terrace. There are only three parcels there. They're much bigger parcels than what you find on the lower area. Okay. One, two. Yeah, there's quite yeah a bit that's of tree uh, 0.99 acres. I think that was like a point, point 0.6 acres, point 0.5 acres, and that was a little bit smaller. But so they're bigger than the properties you'd find on Bailey. So we matched it to the zoning district, but you're saying based on the map that probably should have been caught and it should have been part of the other yeah we mentioned this neighborhood because we needed to find you know some delineation and so we followed the national register as so uh, now if we followed the national register there would be even more taken out no nope, there would be just this I've got just to those three yep. yeah okay. so if i drew this line here um, that's the National Register. This, all of oh. these up here are all in the National Register. This is the National Register. Oh, I thought it was the South, Dark South one. No, nope, that's, that's, that's the existing design review. Existing, all right. So that was the question that had come up before when we were drawing this line was, what would be in our new design review and what would not? And we were trying to include all of the neighborhood. So mm -hmm. either everybody's yeah. in or everybody's out because then we've got a reason to say that's why we're drawing the line. So we had a question. We've got some parcels in and some parcels out. Do we include, do we add these ones in new or do we pull these guys out? And I think that, is that the next one that's up? 30 Bailey. Is that the one on the corner? Clarendon and Bailey. So this was Resident 30 Bailey, excluded from the district. Um, oh, that's this person up here. Yeah. Up here in the nose. Wanted to be removed. But they are currently in the historic They district. are currently in the historic district, which kind of le leads to the, you know, then there was another one if you go farther down. Um, this person on Mather Terrace didn't want to be in the district. Um, so we got a couple of them that were all following that same theme and that district and so mm -hmm. I think what I had for in number two which kind of goes the next step farther is playing devil's advocate every other design review neighborhood is a mixed-use neighborhood except for this spot up here and these guys over here but we'll talk about those guys later but everybody else is in a, more of a mixed-use the person on Mather Terrace is right, sort of in the middle of things with they're all historic buildings on Mather Terrace. Yeah, they're all historic, um, but uh, what I was just pointing out is there is a, this is the only one that is up 
purely residential neighborhood by zoning. It's just residential 6,000. This is mixed use. These are urban center. That's urban center. That's mixed use. That's res 1500, which is a much higher density, but we'll talk about that one separately. That's mixed use. That orange down there, that, that East State is a mixed use district. Um, all of this is mixed use. That's mixed use. That's mixed use. And this is National Life, which is a, a gateway, which is a, another mixed use district. And the college is mixed use. So if you, if you look, this is kind of a unique thing. They're the only residential group that is. And there are other residential neighborhoods that are not going to be in design review, such as Loomis, Liberty, um, these other parts up here, Franklin, they're also in the historic <coughs> National Register District. So from a consistency standpoint, it would make sense to probably remove the rest of these guys. What The, the other argument going the <coughs> other way is that these other neighborhoods aren't as close to the state house as th th that neighborhood is. But I, I, I think we talked about this at the last meeting. I live on the top, <coughs> top of Richardson Street, mm -hmm. and that's out of design review, and that neighborhood should be in. I mean, it's, it's yeah, pretty, the proposal here would put you in. Yeah, uh -huh. because it's all historic buildings. It's a pretty coherent neighborhood. Yeah. Watch yourself when you turn around. There's a cord right next to you. So, so, Mike, if we were to remove these pieces <coughs> that have been requested, will this be the only example of a sort of chopped up neighborhood uh, that, uh, under the zoning regulations of neighborhoods? So the proposal, what the proposal would be is if we took these guys out, the next time we're opening, and we may discuss whether we put this in the proposal, <coughs> in, in the same proposal, if we're going to go to city council is do we change their zoning designation to the res 9000 and change their neighborhood so that way it does follow that line okay so okay so that goes for those three parcels <coughs> and there's the the other that's more like a in the middle of everything here with this guy up here yeah we've got um, these three we've got that one and then there's the whole neighborhood question whether that stays in or goes out. Uh, okay, I thought you mentioned that there was another person. Yeah, on Mather Terrace. Mather, Mather Terrace, Terrace yeah. is way down here. Okay. So he's pretty yeah. much, so it's pretty much, there's these three, there's one little clip on the end, and then there's this guy here, which beg, which asks a question really, should this whole neighborhood be in design review or should this whole neighborhood be out of design review? Just based on the fact that it's the only purely residential neighborhood that will be in design review. We didn't tinker with that, right? Uh, the line used to just clip the bottom of the neighborhood, so we did add a bunch. It's this last car run we did? This was like quite last minute, like the, the last voting we did was... was <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, I see, know. You see the dark, the dark line shows where the okay. old, and that's, that's part of the state-owned property, so that's the... Um, okay. That. We yeah. added it because we wanted to add the whole neighborhood, right? Yeah, we wanted to follow neighborhood lines as much as possible because we wanted to have a justification for why. Yeah. That that whole hillside is pretty visible from the state house. If you look, all of the houses are. I mean, they don't stand out, but they're. I think that was. I mean, that was the biggest part of our reasoning in the first place. Yeah. Like, this, I'm, it was like, oh, this is you know within the viewshed of the state house, so. Sure, why not? Mm -hmm. The Mather Terrace houses are very visible from the state house. Did did someone? I thought I heard someone. Oh, I was just going to. I couldn't remember what the lines are, but the black line is our current proposal for the design review. No, the that's the existing is the, today. The hash is our proposal. Oh, okay. Which I so oh, maybe I should get one of those. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just look at that. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the, the, black line, the current the effective line. The black, and black line forever. looks like you oh, put a GPS on a rabbit oh, okay, and let okay, it loose. That's helpful. <laughs> the hash line is already <laughs> within the historic <laughs> district. The hash line mostly follows the historic district so in this area, in that area, but not in other areas. So we've added it in there. But I think so. I think that's ultimately the the question for this side is you know. 
are we keeping them keeping them in or not? The other thing is from the corner of Bailey and State, looking up the street. Yeah, they, those really look like contributing buildings to me. Oh, they are contributing buildings, but I mean, it, the, the question also goes, you know, we've got mixed use areas like Elm Street, we've got other, we've got, you know, you can go up East State, and there's a lot of historic buildings up East State. It's also in the National Register District. It will not be in design review. So there's a lot of, there are a lot of things that are not in East, design East, review. East State Street will not be in? It won't be passed. It stops at Cedar Street. Up to Cedar Street, it will is in, and then it stops. And that's that's the current boundary. Yeah. Yeah. I, in the current proposed yeah, boundary. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that. Yeah. Both. Yeah. Yeah. We added like a couple of parcels right there. It's like Cedar Street is like at the bottom of the hill, right? Mm -hmm. Up to the college. Right far up. It's halfway, okay. halfway down. Halfway down the hill. Yeah. It's really yeah, we, steep. Yeah. We added a few properties just. It's like halfway east to of Miles Court because yeah. um, it was actually part of their, those properties are actually part of the designated downtown, but okay. that we're, not, corner we added. we're not in, yeah, but we're actually not being regulated like they should have been. The uh, East State Street is really a connecting corridor with the uh, college, uh, and it's, I think with the exception of that new apartment building that was built on Cedar Street, uh, it's, uh, it's they're all historic buildings. Yeah, and I think just that's a little bit of the reason why playing devil's advocate, why this area, you know, th there are a lot of areas that have historic homes, and the question yeah. is, why would a low density neighborhood like this one be in when so many other areas, which are mixed use or higher density, all these yellows and greens are all higher density. These are mixed use, are all higher density. But you know, the meadow has equally nice historic homes, but they won't be in design review. In terms but of the view shed, though, if you were people are going to be stopped here at State and Bailey, right? So they're going to be looking, possibly looking up and seeing all of those properties, which isn't necessarily the case on East State. <clears throat> I mean, it's more view shed kind of uh, considerations that we had before. Mike, just so I'm clear, are you recommending that we take out the entire neighborhood or go back to the original, to the existing control district boundary? Uh, my recommendation was I would be leaning towards removing these guys. Okay. So, but so reduction. You guys, the status quo. Yeah, the status quo. We would be losing a couple of properties right. on the north side of Terrace Street. Yep. And I said, I'm not saying that the neighborhood isn't deserving of protection, but just from an equity standpoint. And then that's the capital complex. Just to the to capital the complex to starts here, it. going going down. Yeah. So, what do you want to take out, Mike? That will. Everything that's this this shade of purple up here, that neighborhood. So we're trying to follow neighborhood lines. So either that whole neighborhood would be in, or that whole neighborhood would be out. As I said, I'm not saying they're not deserving buildings in there, but if the people who have buildings in there have generally responded negatively, and the fact that part of their thing is these are residential homes. And they can't be anything but residential homes. They can't be businesses there. Uh, Mather, Mather Terrace, uh, Richardson Street, and all that stay in, right? Uh, what I was saying is no, they would not. Mather. Where's Mather but Terrace? It's, your, so it's the, the decision here. Mather Terrace is um, the, south side the of Mather extension. Terrace would still be in. No, my it's Terrace like Street extension. Yeah. Yeah. Mather Terrace is really visible from the, from the State House. Uh, so, and uh, uh, they, it's a really nice little co cohesive neighborhood. If there's one new house uh, in there, that uh, Chapman Street would be in or out. Uh, they they would be out. Anything north of Terrace and Mather would be out. Right, but so it's south, not. That was just my what I was Mather. what I was saying based on my comments, is what they're deciding right now as to what mm -hmm. goes in and stays out. 
So one one theme that we've kind of followed is um, concentrating on having design review in places that are likely to have commercial development. That's why a lot of the stuff south of the river is now included. Um, so what Mike is saying would go along with kind of that theme. Of I, I, I just think of things that can be done in a neighborhood for just people doing, you know, that is just as damaging as a commercial development. It doesn't happen very often, but it just, it really can detract from the neighborhood. And particularly a, 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 a neighborhood, I think it's the backdrop for the state, for the, for the state house. Uh, and it's not necessary that the residents are malicious, they just may not know. So if they had to go through yeah, the process. Yeah, I think, <coughs> you know, it's, it's uh, people, <laughs> People would come and say, well, you're not going to tell me what to do with my house. I'm always doing good things in my house. Yeah, but uh, uh, maybe the guy across the street wants to uh, demolish his house or put a whole roof addition on it or do something like that, which really detracts from the neighborhood. Uh, and I doubt if there'd be very many applications For any of that kind of thing, but you know, people want to put additions uh, you know, on Terrace Street down. It's almost to Bailey. Uh, they uh, turned a garage into a uh, mother-in-law apartment, and, and what they they demolished the garage, but then it was pretty bad shape, and then replicated it. That went through design review, but. You could have put up something. Well, I think think of the apartment building on Cedar Street. You know, that's really in an that's really in a um, residential neighborhood. From I mean, they're commercial uses, but the houses are are, uh, and that could have just as well been a house rather than a multi than a multi. And people have, have, have problems with that. Complain to design review about it. Why didn't you do something about it? Well, it's not design review, so. But that could easily have been a single family house rather than I think there's two apartments and it maybe three. Uh, so that's why I think including, you know, the residential neighborhoods and uh, particularly those that can have an impact uh, otherwise. That hillside is, the, the general form of the buildings is pretty visible from the state house, particularly Matthew Terrace. So, uh, <clears throat> do we have any other thoughts on this one? Yeah, I moved that we uh, remove the neighborhood. I second that. <clears throat> I mean, I, th I think Mike's. I think Mike makes a compelling argument for it. Um, you know, at this point, if I'm, I'm more concerned in the fact that we we built out that portion in a slapdash fashion as we were sort of rushing through a bunch of expansions so we could be consistent with it. I don't think we had a very good discussion to begin with for why to expand that. With it, I would. At the very least, I think going back to this to the existing boundary is fine, but given what the limited number of properties that are left it, with the existing boundaries, I think it would be more consistent to go with what we were saying as being we want to draw the boundaries along neighborhood boundaries. I think it is better <coughs> to remove it than to keep it in. But I understand your, your points. I mean, it, 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 it really is a cohesive neighborhood at this yeah, point. Yeah, I, I understand it. I've lived there for 43 years. Yep. And, uh, and I Mike's think there are a number of neighborhoods that make sense to, to go in, but at this point, this would be the only one in, and that was what the, the point I was trying to make was why <laughs> that, but, yeah, it's uh, compared to Franklin, you know, uh, you know, the Franklin Street with the Franklin, you know. I mean, but I, the proximity of this particular neighborhood. The proximity to the, to the state, state house, house would be yeah, the one reason to I, 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 I sort of understand the connection between 100% residential neighborhood and a neighborhood is likely to be developed as commercial. But I don't think that, I don't, 
think that eliminates <laughs> the possibility of things that are very uh, oh, damaging to the character of the neighborhood happening in residential. It doesn't happen very often. I mean, I think one, one of the buildings that I sort of like what they did, but up on College Street, there's a building that they put all kinds of copper oh. siding on and swoops and things like that. Well, that's in a residential neighborhood. Uh, it wasn't in design review, but it definitely has an impact on the neighborhood of, of changing a house to that extent. I gotta say, I have a conflict in that because I live in that neighborhood. Uh, and if I'm not an advocate for design review in my own house, you would have been an advocate. You would have advocated for this anyway. So I don't think anyone's going to accuse you of having well, a conflict. I, I, and, you're, and you're asking to be regulated. I'm thinking about putting solar panels on my roof. So. Uh, that yeah. Uh, so, so do we have do we have any other um, thoughts on um, so Aaron's let me, let me motion? Let just make sure I'm clear that those that current is in the, the existing historic district, existing expanded historic district. These are all, with the exception of those three, in the National Register historic district. Because that line is actually not on. The, yeah. Okay. <coughs> so they have been deemed to be a historic resource for the city. Um, and I, I just think they're important viewshed. Anything else or should we go to vote? I'm still waffling a little. I, I think the Terra Street properties, that makes sense to yeah. take those out. And to make them to re, redo the zoning district to the one that they actually belong in. That, yeah. I think those things should happen together, but I think that makes sense. I'm, I'm not sure. I can't picture specifically how you can see those properties from the state house, and I'm, I'm looking just at the map. Wondering what that view looks like. Yeah, I guess. you can't. They're right behind it, but there's a bunch of trees. So, I mean, that's right. the state house, and the road comes right up. And it would so the houses on the south side of the road would still be in if we took but that district. But there's one out. house. There's one house. As far as I can tell, there's south, one property. It looks like there's two properties on. Okay, Mallory. on the south side. Yeah, one's totally treed. So that property would still be in. That property would still be in. If and we that, took the district. Out. Yeah, that one. That's a little further. It's a steep part right there, so you can really see that one. The JFO building considered part of the state complex? Yeah. It looks like it's its own mm -hmm. parcel. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's you can see everything it that's it's Mather Terrace. You can you can see Aiken coming up. Uh, I see, okay. I do see. Okay. What are we seeing? It looks like it's its own parcel. And there are private residents that are part of the it's, state. It's house part of the complex. state yeah. complex. So we, we wouldn't be taking that one out. Um, mm -hmm. the extent of what you're recommending to be removed now? According to the motion, everything that is in this purple in that hatched area would be removed. <coughs> yeah. Which right now includes the terrace properties. Can right. you <laughs> what's the line? Out the terrace properties? I don't know enough about these properties yeah. here that Following the existing today's boundary, I don't know enough about these properties to make a recommendation. I mean, if we remove these and add them to that, you know, are these potential for mixed use? I mean, if we added these uh, to that neighborhood, then you could yeah. theoretically, but I think those are mostly, I mean, this has always been a residential. Yeah. Yeah. Houses and apartments. Yeah, yeah, I think that there's. I walk that street quite a bit walking my daughter across town and there's I think there's some a lar a large building that made into apartments around here and then these are definitely like families. There's like three families. Yeah, because definitely yeah, when you get down to the Baldwin area down here, this is where you've got a lot of V and R C and, and mm -hmm. 
Baldwin those changed. types of offices and right Baldwin is all offices now offices so the last residential was just sold right? it's sold somebody bought um VNRC oh I believe so they're gonna move I think they're expanding got a lot of work to do yeah it's but I think they I was at a meeting there and they said that was the last residential yeah property on the street yeah. so. So Baldwin is all offices now. So can we have an amendment to your motion to take up the three properties on Terrace Street separately? Um, yeah, we could, if, if, let's, if we start with this one, if we start with Aaron's motion, if that fails, we can go back to just removing those three or removing yeah, some I things. think the, the cleanest way is just go down the motion because if, if you only want the neighborhood three, goes, go to, those go three go. The motion. <coughs> right, but if yeah, we vote for it, that removes those also. Yeah. 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 Because they're in there right now. Okay. So do we, do we, want, do we want to discuss the pending motion anymore or, or vote, which would be the entire neighborhood? Okay. All in favor of Aaron's motion, which was seconded by Ariane, um, say aye. 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 <laughs> All opposed? Uh-oh. Okay, still well. Uh, <laughs> I'm waffling in nayland, uh, so we'll go nay. Okay, okay, so that, that did not pass. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to propose a motion to remove the three properties on Terrace and rezone them to the appropriate district, which is this 11-2. All right. I'll second that. Okay, so I have a clarifying question about that motion. What about the other parcel that we've heard about that's sticking up um, north of it? I don't think that's following. That's oh, the National Bailey? Register line goes up and comes down and goes up. I don't know. This we must be a non-contributing thing and for whatever reason when they did the boundary they yeah, decided can't to quite cut that tell one where that I is. looked at that house recently. I mean it's certainly one, is a that nice just one, one house? Is that just there? a house what road is that? It's one parcel. It's on uh, Bailey yeah. it's sorry Bailey thirty. Yeah. Bailey. It's um it's right past Clarendon. Like Clarendon. all the other ones it's a steep site so yeah. there's not a lot of available area. Clarendon. If that's in the historic really we should leave that as yeah. we should yeah. treat that yeah. section. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the last one. It was right. like an accident. Yeah. Those yeah. Got, right. It would just that's what I'm hearing. No, they wept in and they should not. So, yeah, another, another question would be, um, is part of your motion to also um, suggest that city council change zoning to reflect yes, these that's three part parcels? Of okay. To remove them from the district and remove them from the review district yeah. and rezone yeah. them. Okay. Can you rezone just three parcels? Yeah. Oh, you can. Okay, so yeah. it wouldn't be like blasting open the zoning That's regulations. Like no just to <laughs> yeah, those no, three. Already, I mean, we're already revising already the map. Doing. We would just go and we would just have to point out and identify that those oh, okay. three, and two of which I've already talked to and are fine. Okay, so Stephanie's motion is to remove the three parcels on Terre Street only, and to also suggest that they be rezoned to. Uh, 11-2. 11-2 neighborhood. Thank you. I was like, how do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> somebody's, yeah. somebody's, somebody's been studying her math. You need to study the zoning math. <laughs> <laughs> I come prepared. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's really tiny font. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm amazed you can read that. It's astounding. It's the distance that's the problem. Okay, so any further discussion on this one? I haven't had a second. Oh, yeah, we have a second. second. Yeah. I seconded. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, Barb I'm seconded. Sorry. I didn't hear that. She was she was the first to second. Uh, <laughs> so uh, let's let's have a vote on Stephanie's motion. Uh, all in favor of making this change, say aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. So that one will pass unanimously. We'll make that change. So those three out. Everybody else stays in. Mm hmm And it sounds like. Um, we're not going to have a motion to change the other parcel there on Bailey. What if we? What if we moved it back to the original a house in there? That's kind of what I was, that's kind yeah, of yeah. What's the, 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 the one what's rock, the hole? The what's hole? the like 
Yeah, because like, that seems weird. The whole no in, in between. The oh, the blue. Yeah, I, I don't know it's what on the that, east side of the street. What that is? It's somebody who's on the right so I, side of. So I live near there. I, I want to. I that property might not have a home on it. There's a there's a there's one little tract that's just past the road. That's on the there's right. on the right, and there's nothing there. And then you go up a little further, and it's about it seems like about another lot up. And so it's not, there's in the blue not in the historic district. There's a there's house nothing there. I don't think tucked there's in the woods back right there. Oh, there it is. Oh, well. A house that's right, across, lie. right across from 30. Yeah. It's not like there's a house back there. But it's set back behind some trees. I think I that? always thought that that was the next property up. I could be wrong, though. Yeah. That one? So There's a blue it's house that's up there that I remember. Bailey changes to another st name, street name. Yeah, right. it's um, um, up there. Hubbard Park. Is it, no, it's not Dewey. It's that's not the other one. Hubbard though. Park Drive. Sunnyside Terrace. Off Burn. Oh, yeah. Oh, Sunnyside no. Terrace is once you get top. Yeah. Oh. This map doesn't have labels, so it can't. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know enough about that parcel on the east to like, bump out. I could be wrong about it. I, I, I apparently am, but I always, I always thought it was. It's not exactly visible from the street. No. I think that's obvious. I kind of like the idea of keeping. What, what's the dis divider line between the dark red and the lighter red, purple? The two like state this, house behind. This the, yeah. State this is urban center one zoning district because it includes all of State Street out to Bailey and all the way into the downtown. Can you point out the state house? State house would be right here. What's the, is that a property line that divides? This nose them? that sticks up is the property line. This is all the forested hillside behind yep. the state house. And the red part is also forested back there? Uh, or no? Yeah, most of this up here is all That's forested. The, trail that the, goes the, up the, the tower. state house okay. is probably sitting right in this area here. Okay, and there's then your, right, the purpley, family. the purpley residential one that's next to that is yep. that all forested too? Uh, it's all forested above the end of Richardson Street. Yeah, yeah. Okay. a lot of this is okay. That large parcel to the north. I like yeah, the idea of keeping like stuff right by the state house in. I don't like the idea of splitting a neighborhood, but but that neighborhood comes right down to the state house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Currently, it's in, right? I mean, we're but, uh, currently proposing. Our proposal. That is, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that, the whole today, neighborhood. Yeah, where where the rules in effect today follow the black line, which divides that neighborhood into two. So the uh, oh yeah, there is a house back there. Is design review meant to take viewshed into account, though? It does, but only it it primarily looks at blocking views of the state house, not necessarily being an eyesore from somebody who's looking at it behind the state house. If not to say the rules can't be changed. We, so we've design reviews like had some design review on the Historic Preservation Commission. Both have had discussions about that backdrop for the state house, yeah. which I've, I've probably been in 30 state capitals. And having a wooded hillside as a backdrop for the state capital I almost think it's unique it's in the unique. country. Yeah. And that really ought to be protected. But I don't think design review is going to keep people from t t cutting down trees. Is that correct? <coughs> like if this parcel back tricky. here wanted to cut all its trees down. Because it's residential, it would be very tricky because it would that would be something we would take up in site plan. And so. And like development or review or something. If, would design review give us that latitude? I don't know that would take some that would take some homework because removing trees design review is to get into design review we're talking about making a change to a structure structure right. so if you're cutting down trees could, as a part of a construction project yes if you're just cutting down trees you're probably going to be allowed to cut down the trees that's a good point i'm just wondering like if we're going to get what we want out of keeping the design review district close to the state house there or if there's some other mechanism that protects the viewshed there, because I agree, I want, you know, the it's nice to look at a wooded hillside behind the state house and. It, 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 is that still in the development area that uh, was 
there are areas developed as uh, designated as developable in the city, and that whole backdrop was designated as part of that. I objected to it. Uh, designated downtown? No, it's oh. a, it's a the growth center. Growth uh, center. Yeah, a, gr a growth area, and. Yeah, I think we took it out of the growth center. Good. I, I suggested that I put up a, a condo building up in there if that was the case. And, well, you never get a zoning permit for it, so I thought, well, it's, the street is actually, Richard's street's actually dedicated all the way up the top of the hill. There are granite markers in the ground and everything. And uh, I think that would be a really, it's now the steepest street in Montpelier. It's steeper than the ones over on the cliff. Clip? Oh. That's what the city says, and you, d you don't want to take it another two blocks up the hill. <laughs> no way. <laughs> but that backdrop is is really unique and important. And it ought to be protected. And also, as you come out of the side of the state house towards what used to be the pink lady, um, I, you can see that neighborhood up above too, can't you? Yep. Particularly if you come out the uh, west end, west, the, the yeah, west, the west entrance, side. and, and uh, at one point there is a proposal to move the Pink Lady, the building, the state building, and put up like a seven-story office building there for the state. I think and I remember it, that. <laughs> the, the view from the state house lawn up through that neighborhood and the back lawn is really the. The whole idea of the state house sitting in a residential neighborhood and, and using the residential buildings is pretty special to Vermont. I mean, you go to most state capitals and the state house is surrounded by parking. In any other state, the lawn in front of the state house would have been parking and they would have torn down the houses on the neighborhoods and put parking in. So that's really important to protect for the city. Kind of emphasizes the idea that the state house is the people's house. Yes. As, as when I tell my friends, my kids used to walk to school through the state house. <laughs> you know, they just you can't, can't. People can't believe that from other states. Really. Just, the fact that you can just walk in is the. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Well, do we have? Uh, do we have any other motions related to numbers one or two on the matrix, which is you know this terrace street area and and thirty Bailey? I'm just wondering if that property on the top of Bailey that sticks out, if there's that is 30 if it Bailey. Yeah. that's thirty Bailey, mm -hmm. yeah. If that really, if there is a solid argument for that being in that district, or if that also makes sense to be moved out of oh, the 30, district. Thirty Bailey. Yeah, it's in the historic it's register. Right? It's in the it's national. In the, yeah. Okay, I don't know what's right there. That's it's a, why it's it, a big uh, Victorian. Okay. It's it's pretty prominent. But then the parcel across the street is is not. It's like a, yeah. I was looking. I realized now I was wrong. There is a house there, and it's like okay. So that line does make sense from an aesthetic perspective, yeah. certainly. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. That's what I was asking. And and yeah, I, if I remember correctly, if you start going up Clarendon, like right after the corner off of Bailey, the houses are still older, but they're not quite the same caliber as the rest of those going all the way up Bailey. Once you get Harvest Park Drive, the whole neighborhood, that's a real distinct change. The houses out past Hubbard Park Drive are all new houses. Mm -hmm. There's a real distinctive neighborhood, and if you go up Hubbard Park Drive, it's all new houses. And, I mean, for kind of for the record here, 30 Bailey is in the same zoning neighborhood as the rest of these uh, parcels that we'll, we're proposing to include nearby. And uh, we seem to agree that 30 Bailey is part of that neighborhood that's south of it. It's um, because they're more historic in nature and, and kind of go together more. Even though it looks funny on the map. Mm -hmm. Even though it looks funny on the map. But there's, we have our reasoning for this. They're on a corner. It's not that weird. <laughs> yeah. when, when I came to Montpelier, maps could be really misleading because I couldn't figure out why Elm Street wasn't connected with Cliff Street. <laughs> because maths are two dimensional. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lift. I don't. I don't I know, right? It looks. It looks like they're just a gondola. Would be great. Like, That's yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So that's one and two.
covered this. So, do we have we another motion? Do we need a motion on two? Uh, I'm just I'm just saying before we have Mike move on to no, the we next had a, we item. had a motion on two and it failed. So okay. um, basically, the map stays where it is, except for removing those three. Okay, great. So Mike, bring us to number three, please. The next one. So the other one that kind of is all residential in, in nature. Um, we got comments from the folks from Franklin Square Condos. Mm -hmm. um, and what was strange about theirs is, if I can find it, um, you'll see right here where the street is, this parcel actually connects to this parcel. There's a little space here where that connects to that. So their question was, hey, half our condos are in design review and mm -hmm. half our condos are out of design review, mm -hmm. even though they're on the same parcel. Oh, and that's connected. a problem. <laughs> and connected. Yeah. Um, pro the property on the corner is a separate property, but they kind of wrap around that property on the corner. So. Oh, like to the west, it's part of that property? And then north of the... Yeah, one. so there's a property yeah, like on the corner of Franklin and Maine that's its own independent one. Okay. The yep. condos are the second, kind of like the second from that intersection and the second from the intersection of Franklin. Got it. And they just kind of connect in behind the on that one. So their questions were, I mean, one of the obvious is, um, should both be included? in design review um, and then they had some questions on concerns about maintenance and improvements such as changing windows and those types of things which I think so there are, there are three buildings in the old sorry I know Franklin Square way too closely <laughs> um, but there's that like single house and then the one that sits on uh, Main Street and you're saying the one behind on Franklin that used to be part of Franklin Square one is not connected and it's a house. It's not the condo townhouse. If I, if I draw this. it, it's just a little bit easier. If you've got Main Street coming across, and then you've got Franklin going up, there's a property on the corner that's its right, own that property. Big white house, yeah. And then oh, this oh, one <laughs> kind of goes like this. Mm -hmm. Goes like this, and then some of the condos are over here, and some of the condos are over here. But it's really they're one parcel. In what but we you're have. saying that one over there is not. Yeah, yeah what we did was okay. the design review line goes oh, okay. like this. That's not really a parcel line. And it's not a parcel line. So this set of condos is in, and this set of condos is out. And is this part of the, um, what is the thing that you have to have, the, is it the designated downtown has to be in design review? Or what's the yeah. thing that, like, for the certified local government? I think the designated downtown yeah, the has to be in Designated there. downtown, I, I don't it, think it extends out this far. Okay. I think it goes out to the where the red properties are. Okay. I think the I think the designated downtown goes maybe out to the roundabout there. Yeah, I okay. think it goes out just past yeah. the Yeah, I mean I would as someone who's worked on, you know, the state has made a significant investment in preserving the Franklin Square condominiums as affordable housing. Um, and to add it's been the 10-year process to get <laughs> to the point of asking our organiz the organization I work for for funding, I'd really be in favor of leaving, of stopping it at the roundabout and leaving Franklin Square condos out of the design review district because even if the design review folks are helpful and, you know, any even minute sort of financial, any sort of more financial or uh, process barriers, I think, um, could really hinder this condo association. So, I'd really make a strong argument. And I don't, I don't know if we end it at the roundabout. What? How, how that else? That's, 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 well, no, they own their individual condo units, but they have to all work on the exterior right. maintenance of these buildings, which are very difficult to maintain, and that's been part of the part of the real struggle. Um, and then to add another layer of, you know, any would, would be really difficult, I think. 
So are you proposing that we cut out everything in this 8-3 <laughs> district? I have to, well... So this is the roundabouts right here. Yeah. It goes just past that roundabout, and then we I have mean, all of the so properties this, on Main Street. Yeah, so this goes a little bit back to that same issue. Had had this been removed, then we would have had a, the same conversation here, that this is a strictly residential neighborhood. Um, that's residential 1500, much higher density, but you still can't have commercial here. One option is maybe this should have been mixed use. Maybe it's miszoned. Um, they are mostly residential, but the school is in this area. And I think there's a conversation going on about the future of that school building. Yes, no. I haven't heard that. Oh, yeah. but I will ask you. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of conversations. My daughter's supposed to go there next year. It's very convenient walking distance. Don't start anything yet. So there would, there would be a question, you know, if this was mixed use, maybe it should be mixed use. If it's residential, the same argument applies here. These were the only two strictly residential neighborhoods that are in design. I am surprised so. it's not mixed use. It, it is, it does, it did surprise me a little bit, but it is all residential, residential. except for the, the school. So I but the, the, there's Capital Candy used to have a warehouse down there that's still there, I think. Is it? Oh. It's down on, Fran it's further down on Franklin Street. And I was thinking the Montpelier, what is it, Montpelier Integrative Health, but that's in the, that's mm -hmm. right off the roundabout there, so yeah. that's in the other mm -hmm. district. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, one property out from the roundabout in every direction, so out to Brown Street. So I, I've got to confess, I mean, when we were doing the big map, this was not really on my radar, but I remember when I was looking at it, I could, I can, and as now I'm looking a little more closely now, I can't understand the rationale for why that neighborhood is in design review. Like what Our discussion touched on the fact that it's a kind of a gateway yeah. when you're coming down Main Street from, in, when you're entering Montpelier from that direction. This is, um, I, it's kind of arbitrary, but that's, but, that's, it, but, but the good. argument would be this is when you're starting to hit downtown proper, I guess it you would was, say. It was already in design review, so yeah. it was kind of made sense to go through and say we're, they're not really changing the boundaries. Mm -hmm. It doesn't follow a neighborhood boundary. It splits Franklin North and Franklin South and mm -hmm. neighborhoods. It just it just was the properties that abut. Main Street, mm -hmm. right? That was just the ones that are on Main Street. On Main Street. Setting the boundaries in Montpelier, we had a <coughs> discussions with the National Register District. You just kind of got to stop somewhere because the neighborhoods don't have abrupt change. Occasionally they do, but most of the time it just it, it just keeps going. When the, we did the National Register District. Uh, uh, in that same area, Franklin Street, and I can't remember the name of the street. <coughs> it's going to Franklin and North Street. There was a guy there that wanted in the district, and it just there, there there's really it's really hard to draw clear lines uh, in most cases in Montpelier. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would make a motion to take out that whole, now that I'm <laughs> looking at it, to take out that whole neighborhood from the roundabout up. Okay. Given that it's residential, and I don't think, even though I voted against the other, or voted with the other motion, I, to me, this the state house is a more compelling sort of view shed reason. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Middle school is part of that. Yeah, and the residential on the Liberty side, Liberty Street side of the street there. The, <coughs> the, the residential all the going out. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Do we, do um, and it also raises the question. I mean, those condo associations are merging, so isn't that going to be? There's other buildings further down on Franklin. So technically, won't that be one parcel? They'll be separate parcels. They may be a, the same condo oh, okay. association, but there is a property boundary in there. Oh, okay. I guess I should know that. <laughs> it might have to do with how the whole deal's structured. If they merged 
merge through some documents, which you can do, merge parcels. <coughs> We'd be back in the same predicament if we could decide. Okay, so do we have a second for Arion's motion? That's to remove the whole neighborhood. Yep. So we would be oh, cutting it section. off where this red yep. line is. What's the name of that neighborhood, Mike? Just so we can. Uh, it's Franklin Street Southwest and Liberty Street West, because Liberty Street West goes up to Main Street. Franklin Street North uh, Southwest goes in this area. Eight two and eight three. Eight two and eight three. Yeah, maybe that's easier to use. Does so that include the buildings across the street from the school? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They would all be removed. Isn't there on this building? Wonderful building. They're wonderful building buildings and you know well taken care of. Uh, I do see that as a gateway to the city, from my view. But. Okay, so we have a second from Aaron. Is that right? Yep. Uh, okay, so those in favor of uh, Aaron's motion, which was to uh, remove from our proposal all parts of A2 and A3 neighborhoods, uh, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Okay, so we don't, we don't have a pass we did a two -two. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so what do we need to carry a motion? We'll, we'll need we'll need four to pass. How about you break ties? Oh, you have to have a. If you had one more, then we'd have to hear from the chair. So your indecisiveness is protecting I, my I indecisiveness. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I can certainly see the rationale where it should be removed. I, it's definitely different than the neighborhood we were just talking about. Yeah. In terms of the state house protection and view shed. So, I, I don't know. if you make another motion, I'll say yes this time. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it is a problem that that parcel is split. And then we'll get Kirby in. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's the strangest thing. And usually yeah. we were following parcel boundaries. So somewhere it was uh, those were identified as separate parcels. Yeah, the motion. Yeah, if, if if there was an interest in keeping this, then we would have to revisit the question of that other half. Of if it, so we'd have to add that it, in oh. if we were yeah, okay. We would have to probably go through and add the other half of the Franklin Square condos in, right. which I think might have been my recommendation. Didn't even read it here. I mean, <laughs> if, it, if it helps at all, be, we've been through the um, DRC process um, recently for my wife's business out of our house, and um, I mean, I don't, I don't feel like it was bureaucratic at all. It was, it was painless and quick. I mean. So yeah, no, I, I appreciate that, and I, um, you know, I, I know that the design review committee is trying to be helpful, but, you know, the maybe I, yours was about a fence, did you say? And I feel like the nature of some of the Franklin Square, you know, they have to get together to agree on exterior work to their buildings and exterior maintenance and, um, and you know, pool their resources and keep their condo. So it's like a little bit, I feel yeah. like it's a little Ma bit, could be potentially more challenging. Maintenance is, doesn't have to come to design review. If you're, no, if right. you're repairing and doing in-kind repairs. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm using maintenance in perhaps an incorrect way, but like, you know, replacing a window or something like that. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> window. <Exactly. laughs> no. <laughs> Asset management. Yeah, I mean, I think there are beautiful houses there, but there are beautiful houses in a lot of neighborhoods in Montpelier, and I don't know that that's enough of an argument for me, based on the <coughs> location that they should stay in. They get, <coughs> all those houses get appreciated by all the middle school students. They, they come out the front door. They do get yeah, appreciated so by the middle They're students. probably more visible in some ways. Are you going for the motion? I, I'm, yes. Okay. I'm like, it's, too late. it's too late because it's That's what gone. it sounded like. Should, should I make the motion? I, I, I'm motion. sorry. I didn't, no. It took me a second to get there. That's, no, no. That's <laughs> okay. Totally fine. I, should I make the motion again then? I move to, yeah. no. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. Renew your motion. I move to remove the neighborhood from the roundabout up. I'm not sure. 8-3 and 8-2. 8-3 and 8-2. Yeah, remove all parts of 8-2 and 8-2. second again. 
Okay. Uh, and so those in favor again of the of the motion? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, that's so you need a fourth vote. Um, it sounds like. Sorry, Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> I punted it to you after all. <laughs> what do you think John I, would say? What's that? What do you think John would say? <laughs> what would John say? Yeah. John would say take it out. Are you know, trying yeah, to convince me? <laughs> no, I'm just saying that could be a way for you to make it. <laughs> Um, that's a good point. Uh, you know, the reason, the, the reason why, okay, okay. So, so this, this is, this is my take on it and, and how I would vote on this. Uh, my reason for the voting this way would be, uh, it is predominantly residential, but it's proximity to the urban centers is, you know, pretty compelling for me. Um, I think it is an extension of downtown. I would think in the future growth of Montpelier, I've always thought it makes a lot of sense to grow up Main Street there uh, for mixed use development. Um, so I, I think that I'm inclined to want to keep it in because because looking to the future. Um, is that a nay? So I'll be voting, yeah, we're we'll voting nay. Um, so. All right, three, three. So so leaves us with, the property. Leaves us only reconciling that property. Yeah. We yeah. Then add it in to clean up the boundary. Yeah. Because we thought we had followed the boundaries. Yes. But we did. But we'll need a motion to oh. add that in. Move to so make moved. a minor change to include the remainder of the Franklin property. Condominium properties. 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 The Franklin Square condos. Property. Franklin Square condos. I'll second. Okay. Uh, those in favor of Barb's motion? Or Aaron's, Aaron's motion Barb with Barb's you know uh, second? It's fine by me. It was Aaron's motion. It was Aaron's we motion. don't have to fight over who gets it. <laughs> <laughs> those in favor of Aaron's motion <laughs> say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Any abstentions for the record? Uh, I mean, I guess, do we even need a motion for that? I guess we have to. Sure, I'll vote yes. Okay. <laughs> six, six <laughs> you can choose to keep it split, knowing it's a problem. Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was number three. It's up to you. Okay. Um, so number four, uh, Meredith and I discussed, so the, the concern, there were concerns a couple of places about new rules make it difficult to replace windows. I think there's a similar one on solar panels. So I think four and five we can kind of take together. So uh, staff reviewed these and agreed they could be interpreted as people were concerned. You know, would these prohibit solar panels? Um, would there be difficulties replacing windows? Meredith and I developed some alternative language that would require design review for these changes, but clarify that changes of original materials are allowed provided that the loss of materials is not a character defining feature. So you may be able to remove, you may not be able to remove unique stained glass vestibule light over a door on a historic building or drill into and remove a slate roof. But in most cases, we would approve replacement of windows or roof provided new materials is historically accurate, two over two lighting, appropriate sills. We can get some exact wording if, if people are okay with that. So our sense was just I, that. Most of the discussion about the windows, uh, if, if, if I recall it correctly, is uh, the information that's provided to design review about the condition of the windows. And that came out of a lot of the, the public meeting we had about uh, that uh, Cliff Street neighborhood uh, where somebody said, well, they were going to, design review was going to tell us what contractor we use. What we actually told them was, you need to have a contractor that does windows look at it, not some contractors don't do windows, don't know how to do windows. So that I think that's mostly just an informational change rather than any, we're going to look at things like if the stained glass window, that's a character defining feature. So, you know, that's going to get 
that it's mostly just providing good information so you can make a decision. As my contact with uh, efficiency of Vermont is that windows are not the biggest eaters of energy. People think they are, and uh, uh, but they're not. And most windows, if they're in good physical condition, can be weather stripped. And with storm windows, be just as efficient as the new storm windows. That's just kind of the deal of getting the information to design review to make that decision about how significant the windows are, and if it's really going to be an energy improvement piece. And I think I think what we've had was just a in our office is being able to answer the question when people come in. Um, I want to replace my windows. Can I replace my windows? And that's usually we're just trying to go through and say. Well, if they're deteriorated to a point that they can't be fixed, then no, you won't be able to. Or yeah, you can if they are deteriorated, yes. but yeah. you can't if they're not deteriorated. We're not going to let you replace your windows. And that's the that's the question that they have. People people want yeah. to have the option to be able to go through and say, you know, I know it made a huge difference in my house when I replaced the windows. They were, you know, just single pane glass. They would build up ice three quarters of an inch thick on the inside. They were just miserable things. It was the most energy. wonderful thing when I was able to turn a crank and open a window. <laughs> the, <You know. laughs> the, the energy efficient piece is, it, is sort of a, it's an, it, it depends answer. You know, if your windows are all leaky and everything and maybe they need weather stripping, that's, uh, and they are usually character defining features of a building. Yes, so. I think what we found a lot of people saying is the comments we've gotten from a lot of the public was that they want the opportunity to be able to replace their windows. And, and, that, there's, and, that's, there and that was what they're asking. They're like, I haven't read the rules or I tried to read the rules. I couldn't understand it. Does this mean I can or can't replace my window? And I think that's just what we need to be able to do is to have something that, for whatever it is, if it is you can't replace your window unless it's deteriorated, then we just have to make sure that that's known to the public clearly. So it's yeah. not clear in the, in the zoning now. We're not being clear enough. I, I don't think it has been as clear as it Once. as it could be. Yeah. Okay. I, I I think you know it seems clear when you read it, but then when you start talking to historic preservation or DRC, mm -hmm. it starts coming. It's like, well, no. It's like, well, are we or aren't we going to go? And you know, for the is most part, um, is it? we're going to look at the character of the window. So you've got a historic house, you want to replace the windows. We're going to look at the, the materials. Yes, you can replace your windows, but they can't be fiberglass, they have to be wood. All right, I think people would be okay with that. You can replace them, but you got to keep the materials con consistent. you got to keep the pattern right, the size right. Somebody and there are, there are a lot of good <coughs> new windows available there are, now. Yeah. And, oh. and I think if, if, that were, if that were the thing, it's like, yes, you can replace your windows, but they have to be wood composite like material. like material you can't replace them with vinyl or fiberglass then I think people would be okay with that I think where people have issues is when it's like no we want you to fix your windows and that's when people go yeah well, the, yeah and the other issue about old windows is lead paint you know that keeps coming up and then windows are the worst <coughs> location for generating lead yeah, paint dust there's a friction surface yeah issue. so are you in, are you in Meredith drafting language for both the window piece and the separate wording for the solar panel issue? Or, was the, or we do you were, think that the wording for the windows will help address this? I, I'm, just, I'm looking at the We were going to use the same wording. Okay, that's cool. We, we felt the same wording would work for both. Okay. Because no, I just wanted the, to make the, sure. The, the thing yeah. we, were, we were targeting when we were talking was identifying first whether, whether something is a character-defining feature. So I would like to put out yeah. solar panels on my house and I have a slate roof. That's a character-defining feature. We may say no to you. But you may have a historic house that has standing seam or is something else we might say. Mm -hmm. You can put it on that because it's not really a character defining feature. I thought, I thought it was just, it was not just that, but also stuff that's visible from the street on your roof. Stuff visible from the street, yeah. So that would have to be adjusted too. That would too. have to be fixed too. So if we were, to, I, if we were to table this while you worked on getting us copy that language, we have, if we, this is reviewed at the next meeting, we still have to talk. Yes, we can make changes right up to the, to the meeting. And I make a motion that we table four and five while Mike and Meredith draft up the language that they're contemplating so that we can review it at the next meeting. I'll second that because I have... I, I don't think we need a motion just to wait. 
Okay. But you guys are okay with that concept. I mean, I mean, up with that concept. Save time. Yeah, the Windows thing is very like confusing like to me. Actually. I don't understand right. it very well, and I feel concerned what, what? that people can't change their windows. What I, what I wrote just suggested thinking about this is that there would be added to the uh, section as rooftop equipment to fix so be concealed from eye level view, public right away, and so on, and any adjacent properties on flat roof buildings, and then add in a section of uh, when the roof is uh, visible to the public, uh, any uh, equipment, uh, including solar panels, uh, shall, uh, shall not obscure or uh, damage character defining features. Yeah, I think, okay. and I think that's where Meredith and I were kind of going with you. Yeah, I, I think, I if you can email that to me, do you have a copy of that that you can email? I ignore it, and I can't even hardly read my own writing. <laughs> uh, the, I, can, I, can, I can send it to you. Yeah, if I, you can email that to me, that would be great. I would, we'll I talk, would be. We'll talk sorry. about it tomorrow. I, I'll do it after tomorrow night's meeting because this is what I did, and we had a quick discussion in design review, and I think design review is you know, you know, headed exactly the same direction. Yeah. Um, yeah, the goal is to protect character defining yeah. issues, not it's from not, not every single roof and every single window. It's just those windows that have char character defining features or roofs that have that character. Yeah. So does that work for there was a comment I think there was a comment at the meeting also about being able to replace with a standing seam roof? Uh does that I, relate to if your roof is not contributing? That was under the story? old one. Is that in the in the new one or a comment that we got? I thought that came up at the meeting, but I might be remembering oh. differently. I mean, sta standing seam roofs are the easiest ones to install solar panels on. Uh, uh, right. Slate roofs are almost impossible. And with asphalt roofs, you have to penetrate the roof surface, which is never a good idea to have holes, you know, even if you can seal them up and stuff, but it's never a good idea to do that. But. Uh, Standing seam, they just have clamps that go on the standing seam and pass the solar so it's Right. In, in the interest of not di uh, discouraging people from putting solar on, um, what about because they cannot mount the brackets on slate, nor do we really want them drilling through the slate, yeah. um, what about removing the um, slate just below where the panels are? If, and so that what it looks like when it's visible from the street is that the slate is still underneath. I, I think that would be tough from a structural we did it. standpoint because the slates, where do you, how do you stop? We did it. They, they actually, they came back and feathered the slate in on the, along okay. the edges of the panel. So you can't tell, but it was the only way they would mount it because they won't mount it on slate. So, I'm very uh, much in favor of some catch-all language that says that you know there's a strong policy you know inclination to allow solar panels yeah. with materials something like that because yeah. I, I do think that I think that it needs to just kind of overtly be said that yeah. the city so is a preference people. to allow solar panels. Yeah, I agree. Can, can, I, they, can, I, press, can I press my luck and ask for a favor? You can ask. Whatever <laughs> <you> can. <laughs> can, I, can you put it in red line? I will against what we currently have in front of the. It's usually a good idea for me to do that anyway. So okay. the uh, the I other just, thing is about mounting solar panels, that they should be mounted flat to the roof. Yep. You know that not some of them are, oh, aren't tips. angled. You can you don't right. see that very often on a on a pitch roof, but uh, they do do it sometimes, and that really makes the roof look odd. I mean, you don't really change the line of the roof with. Imagine how well that would catch snow. Oh man! <laughs> You'd have a whole glacier up there. All right. So number six. I think we only eight of these to get through. Uh, so the hearing. This was uh, a, a popular one. Uh, the concern about whether subdivisions should be exempt from design review. Um, subdivision of land is the first step in development, and so impacts of subdivision should be considered its impact on the character of historic district. Uh, when I spoke to this woman a few days later, she wondered if it can't, if it can't be added to 2201, which is design review, um, whether these protections could be added to section 3507, which is in the subdivision regulations itself. And that's the section that talks about character of the area. Um, so I went back and forth on this one. Subdivisions 
would have no regulations in design review. Design review just has a bunch of regulations to talk about structures, so it really wouldn't make a lot of sense um, to try to regulate subdivisions in design review. Um, and when I spoke afterwards to some HPC members, we really could only come up with one example. We're like, well, what are we talking about? Give me one example. They said the green up at the college. So the college green, VCFA green. If they subdivided that, the actual subdivision doesn't make a difference, but as soon as they sell it to somebody else, it's going to be redeveloped, and then the college green ceases it's to be the college green. Um, but maybe the best way to solve that problem, that eventuality would be to purchase the development rights um, rather than forcing all development to go through subdivision review for design review. Um, so the, the other question that Meredith and I had bouncing off other possibilities, would people use this to use this rule to prevent people from subdividing carriage houses off from main houses, which happens periodically, happened on East State, uh, a couple other properties. Um, this might preclude that. Might preclude it. Right. People might go through and say, well, you can't subdivide the carriage house off from the house and sell it as a separate parcel because these two are interconnected historically. And you know, where else would you try to apply a design review, historic design review? But for the purposes of design review, they're still both in the district, even if they're subdivided, so that doesn't yeah. change what they're allowed to do. But we could subdivide. Although they could paint it different colors. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Yes. They, they but they the could strengths. do that anyway. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. I think you got to go through a bunch of, I thought about this a lot, it's kind of interesting. Yes, if you subdivide Savings Pasture, subdivide that into a bunch of it certainly has design implications, but uh, it doesn't. The, that review is going to come with uh, with any construction. So it, 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 that it's just it's an odd thing. It doesn't necessarily mean something's going to happen, but it, it it could lead the way to it. It seems so speculative to try to. Dictate how to subdivide it based on how they may or may not build. I mean, it seems that would be a that much more would be more of a yeah. PRV issue than a design review issue. The I don't know whether the subdivision goes through DRV or the not. Subdivision does go through DRV. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. you know, if it's if it's a you know an open space like the green up at the college, if it's an open space. Could the DRV then deny, deny that subdivision? Designated open space? Yeah, it may, or it may have other protections through their PUD. Yeah. So, so my, my eventual end point was that it hasn't been a problem in the, in the past. It hasn't been something that's been identified. So are we, you know, would we really be fixing a problem by doing this or trying to foresee a problem? So my thought is I would just not make any changes. So this question largely comes from me not being at the meeting and not really understanding this issue. Um, like what's the nut of the problem and what's the... So the first, like, like the very first rule, so the first thing in the list of exemptions in design review, the very mm -hmm. first list of exemptions says subdivisions. Okay. And so a woman stepped forward and said that she felt that we should not have exempted subdivisions. Now, as it turns out, subdivisions are already exempt from our design review. So it's not, this is not a change from how we've been doing things. Um, but she still felt that we should have design review go, th uh, have subdivisions go through design review. That's okay. still her push. And All right, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Kind of now <coughs> tossing around. But it's sort of, sort of like very, it's very helpful. Yeah, you know, the, the, the whole zoning, should design review comment on a zoning variance? Mm. I never thought of that one before, but th that's the uh, you know it's, it's sort of like the, yes, it's a, there's there's certainly future implications about it, but to try to write guidelines for that, having gone through this, I think it would be really difficult. It seems like development review already reviews subdivisions. Char it reviews it for character of the area, but it doesn't have a specific reference to historic. 
and I think that was her other suggestion for 3507. Maybe we could add some language in there regarding protection of the historic character or historic pieces of that. And again, that was where we were kind of getting a little bit into, I mean, we do regulate it already a little bit with character of the area. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. the intent of that was more to look at if you had a whole set of houses that all had 80 feet of frontage, and then you had a set piece of the road that was then going to be subdivided, you know, and they were going to be subdivided differently for no real reason. I mean, there may be a character of the area that goes through and say, we should try to keep a consistent pattern of street frontage. Um, even though the rules say you can have as, you know, as, you know, you have a minimum of 60 feet and you decide you're going to do 150 feet of frontage. So I might say, well, it's out of character of the neighborhood. Those are all at 60. Why would we then jump to 150 foot of frontage? Um, so I think that's what the character was looking well, at. at, but. at uh, uh, you can't write the rules so complete that nobody will find. You. That's why you have planning commissions and design review and historic preservation commissions, where people make the judgment, and that a different group of people may make a different judgment. But that's eventually it gets down to people and their uh, opinions. I, I, I feel like that question really just came from not thinking of the whole picture of how the regulations and the DRB and there's many other mechanisms that regulate subdivisions already and that that it's just design review is not the appropriate tool for trying to regulate subdivisions. National life would be the other thing that could subdivide. Yes. But would we put a design review is the question. It has to go through DRB for all those other requirements. Questions. I think the current process, I agree with Kirby, already has a review for subdivision. Okay, so we'll put no change for that one. Okay. And considering we already talked about eight, all we have left is seven. Uh, comment that these uh, are adding too much regulation and that this will scare away possible developers looking to redevelop in Montpelier. While it's not intuitive to think so, the more words, more words is actually good, adds clarity and consistency, and allows more applications to be handled administratively. What developers want is a predictable outcome, and these rules should provide a more predictable outcome than the previous version. That's why we wrote them the way we did. That's why we wrote them. So even though somebody may just flip through them and think it looks, this looks more daunting than before, we have staff that can. The, the National through. Trust did a study of uh, you know, downtown areas and sort of the design review thing, and they found a, a couple of things. One is that it uh, increases property values because you have some idea that your neighbor is your na that your neighbors are going to stay as, as they are, and it actually enhances development. There are tax credits available, so it's. Uh, I think, part of this, sorry. Okay. I think part of this is really a how we market, I guess, <laughs> the update, which is to say if if someone has a question, it's very easy to call Meredith and say, what does this mean for my building? And instead of trying to read it, if it's, if it's too much and making sure that that's something that people know is an option, like just call Meredith and ask her. Yes. Um, I don't know if, how much capacity she has for things like that, but... I think part of it is just making sure that they know that that's a choice. Yeah, and I mean, we've, we've been trying, we maybe haven't done as good a job of, of getting that out to let people know that, you know, don't, don't download the zoning regulations and try to figure out your project. Just pick up the phone and <laughs> call us and just go and say, this is what I want to do, and we pretty much walk you through the project. But also to let people know that you can have an informal review with design review so if you have questions about what you're doing and it's not on the record right yeah we had we had a person come in an informal review mm -hmm. last meeting and uh, everybody's very happy to do that yeah it makes a lot of sense 
I think that this question, though, it's it, it's important in to like make us think about how to do the marketing side of it, the branding side of, mm-hmm. of what we're doing. I mean, and I'm I'm sitting here like trying to think of like how to address this just through outreach, basically. I'm wondering. We talked about having putting this all together as a website, that the city plan is a website, and I'm wondering if we could try to like make a record of maybe having a page about this topic about. I don't know, welcome to design review. <laughs> that sounds like not the. <laughs> but you know what I mean, like a, like a page dedicated design review and and dedicated to, like this is an intro of the process. This is please call us. We will walk you through it. You're not, you're not on your own. Like that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, it's the same as kind of code issues. If you don't go through it with the, the code guy, you know, interpreting the code yourself becomes a, a really difficult task. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, yeah, you know, people, people come in and look at the, you know, the, the all the building codes yeah. we have are probably about that high, and right. everybody gets well, all. It's like, well, don't worry about you know, that. Code, codes are going to prevent people from doing things that they may want to do, and and uh, I, I think the uh, story I've probably told too often is a, a few years ago I brought the National Conference of State Historic Preservation Officers to Montpelier, and these are people that do what I did from all over the country. They were simply blown away by Mount Pelier. Um, several aspects of it. One, they didn't need a car to do tons of things in Mount Pelier, to go to restaurants. I told people we'd run a shuttle and not bring a car. Everybody brought a car at State Park for three days. Uh, and, you know, the, these were the, I guess, a national set of experts one way or another. And the way Mount Pelier looks uh, is a very, it's good for tourists. It's also good, you know, for local businesses, and uh, it's it's important to keep that. Well, so, and thinking about branding, I mean, the your whole point that you made, Mike, about many more of these are handled administratively now, because we have clear <coughs> regulations, um, so that it might actually be much easier. For developers rather than harder because um, did we actually have the ability to do it administratively before were there very there many were, that, that could be done yeah I mean 2017 because we just had this question but from City Council you know we had issued a hundred and forty nine zoning permits 74 of them went to DRB and this year under the new rules we had 145 permits and 21 of them went to the DRB so it's the same number of permits it's just the administrative approvals right. and those 20 that go through are your bigger more compli- complex projects. One, a conversation I had with Ernie Pomerlo who's no slouch of a developer for sure uh, that but there used to be an Act 200 that was uh, done during the Cunard administration, which kind of required towns to identify their resources, whether it was archaeological resources, historic resources, uh, open land, all of those resources. And people just opposed that and opposed that. And Ernie told me, he said, that was the most development-friendly law that was ever done in the state of Vermont because a developer can come in there and the city or town has done the job of identifying if I want to put a supermarket in or if I want to put housing in they have told me where they want that so you know that that kind of information otherwise to get through Act 250 for that stuff the developer has to do all of that stuff so you know so Sometimes regulations are really helpful because a developer knows exactly what they're, uh, maybe not exactly, but it's close not, to what they need to do. not telling everybody what you, it's not going to let you do everything that you want to do, but at the same time, you'll know early on in the process whether you're going to be allowed to do right. it. Right. I mean, so you're not going to invest $100,000 in your plans before right. you find out you can't so do that, it. So that, that kind of information is really very developer friendly. So did anyone else, these were the ones I caught in all of mine, 
I don't know if anyone else had any notes or could remember anything off the top of their head of something that was like, does somebody have something that... I actually watched the meeting again on that. Some of the ones that came in afterwards, or are these strictly from the meeting? Uh, these included the, the some of the emails that came in. I didn't get anything after the hearing. Oh, you didn't? Okay. No, only stuff that came in before. Emails. I think you got everything. That's pretty helpful. Yeah, it covers everything I had. Yeah, covers everything I had, too. All right, so Meredith and I will work on those that draft set of, of other rules there um, to try to clarify those those two points. Other than that, it looks like a bunch of map changes or not changes. So I will update this as well for everyone who hasn't had the experience of going through this, so I'll document what your decisions were, and um, that way, you know, people can't say we didn't listen. We may not have agreed, but we did listen to what the thoughts were. I always had public hearings where somebody said, well, you didn't listen to me, and you, you, but they really say you didn't do what I wanted. You didn't do what I, I mean, wanted. You didn't listen. Okay, well, uh, my, it turns out Mike was right. I thought we would move on to the city plan tonight, but we don't have time. So. Okay, we got through this. He's done these That's matrices important. before. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me to the table, Kirby. Even if it might have been poor. Right, right, <laughs> even if my etiquette was poor. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, well, with that, uh, unless anyone has anything else, we'll adjourn. Anything else for me? Okay. Uh, oh, did you want to talk about the something? Oh, CBRPC. Yes. Yeah. Is that now? I mean, we could do it on or off the record. Yeah. Oh, it's just scheduling. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. So, okay. So, with that, we uh, will adjourn.